Hello and welcome to my basics series of bite-sized hints and tips for your Samsung Galaxy S4 and Android phones in general. We start the series with swiping down from the top of your phone to display settings and notifications. At the top of this display there are a range of settings you can change and if you swipe this bar from left to right you can cycle through many different options. But if you're likely to use some options more often, you can reorder them so they are at the beginning of a navigation bar. You can do this by pressing the small option in the top right of the screen. This will display all your settings and from here you can press on the pencil icon to take you to the notification panel screen. To reorder an option, long press on it until you pick it up and then drag it to your desired location. If you drop it fully on another option that's already there, they will swap positions. So now if I swipe down from the top of a list, I can see the flight mode option while sound has been sent to the end of the list. You can also pick up a setting and place it in between two others. That squeezes the option into the list while shoving everything else after it further on in the list. So in this example, I have brought air gesture up the list and everything else has moved on one spot. Obviously you can move everything around as much as you like, but there is no reset to the default option, so try to remember where you've put everything. Here's one of those Android tricks you just stumble upon when you're tinkering about with your device. If you swipe down from the top of the screen, you will find settings options at the top. You can tap on each of these to turn the setting on or off. So here, I'm tapping on the Bluetooth button to turn it on and scan for other Bluetooth devices. It's the same with Wi-Fi, sound, GPS, driving mode and so on. Tap it to turn it on or off. But this is where the trick comes in. Not only can you tap on each setting, you can also long press on each setting and doing this will take you to the settings page for that option. So if I long press on sound, I'm taken to the sounds settings screen where I can choose ringtones, individual volume levels and so on. And this is the same for each setting. A long press will either take you to the main settings page for that option or describe the option in more detail, such as S-Beam. Obviously, there are many ways to get to the options settings screens, but this is the quickest way to do it because you can access it from any screen or application simply by swiping down from the top of the phone. If you're willing to forego security on your phone, lock screens can now be used to launch applications directly. In this example, pressing the power button displays a lock screen with five applications along the bottom that I can launch. Now because the phone is still technically locked, you have to do a little more than simply pressing the app. What you must do is press the app and swipe at the same time so that simultaneously unlocks the phone and launches the application. When you exit the application, you will be returned to your phone's home screen. So let's see how to do it. First, you will need to go to the settings of your phone. Once you are here, there is a tab at the top called My Device. Press on that. And at the very top of this screen is an option called Lock Screen. In the Lock Screen settings, the option you want is Shortcuts, and this has a toggle. You can turn it on or off. If you press on the actual Shortcuts bar, this will take you to another screen where you can then choose the applications you want to use at the bottom of your lock screen. To remove an application that's already on the list, simply long press on it to pick it up and then drag it towards the bottom of the screen to remove it. A plus icon will appear and if you press on that, you can choose from the list of all your applications on the phone to replace it. In this example, I've used iPlayer. So now when I unlock the phone, you will see that the iPlayer icon has replaced the Facebook icon. You can have a maximum of five applications and just to repeat, this only works if your phone doesn't have any security on its lock screen. The lock screen acts more and more like a home screen these days. Not only can you have applications along the bottom of a lock screen, but you can, if you swipe from right to left, display a whole page of your favourite applications. Launching any of these applications is the same as unlocking the phone. So once you exit the application, you are taken to the phone's home screen. But if you don't want an applications page, you can change it if you want to. And here's how you do that. First, you will need to go to the settings on your phone. In settings, there is a tab at the top of the screen called My Device. Press on that and then choose Lock Screen. Now on this page, the option you want is Lock Screen Widgets. 
press on that option to take you to the relevant screen. The top option is favorite apps or camera. You can toggle this on or off, but if you actually press on the bar, it will take you into another screen where you can actually choose whether you want the applications page or a camera launcher. With the camera option chosen, if I swipe from right to left on the lock screen, this will automatically launch a camera so it is now ready to take pictures without ever having to unlock the actual phone. If you prefer the applications list, however, you can edit that list so you can choose all your favorite applications. On the page, there is an icon which looks like a pencil in the bottom right hand corner. If you press that, small marks will appear against each icon. And if you press on that mark, it will delete the application. Then a plus sign appears. Press on that and you can choose a brand new application which will then appear in the list. So I can, if I want to, put a camera launcher in this applications list. To finish editing, press the pencil again, and there you are. More useful options from your locked phone. Just one word of caution, this feature only works if you don't have any security settings applied to your lock screen. If you have something interesting on the screen of your phone, you might want to take a screenshot, and all devices can do this these days. But the functionality is a little different on each device, so here's how to do it on a Samsung Galaxy S4. All you need to do is press the physical home button and the physical power button on the side of a phone at the same time until a screenshot is taken. So in this example I will demonstrate by holding down both buttons. When you do this, a sound will indicate that the picture has been taken. A notification will also appear at the top of the screen to tell you a screenshot has been taken. To look at this screenshot, simply swipe down from the top of the phone and there you'll see a snapshot of your picture. If you press on it, it will take you to the gallery application where you can see the picture in full as demonstrated here. Once you've finished looking at the picture, that notification will be removed from your phone. So if I swipe down from the top of the screen again, you can see that there is no snapshot of the screenshot. If you do need to see the picture again, what you will need to do is go to your applications drawer and then go to the gallery application. In the gallery, there will be a folder called screenshot and this is where all the pictures are saved whenever you take a screenshot on your mobile phone. And so if I press on this folder, I can see that I've taken two screenshots of my phone. Screenshots can be taken in any application and if you notice, a white border appears when you take the screenshot as well as the noise. As you can see, the notification appeared at the top of the screen. Swipe down and I can look at a snapshot of the screenshot I've just taken. And that is your quick guide to taking screenshots on your Samsung Galaxy S4. First of all, let me explain what the ear notification dock is. If you plug earphones into the Samsung Galaxy S4 or any Android smartphone device, it will detect this by displaying a message in the notification tray. If you then swipe down from the top of the screen to display notifications, there will be a dock of applications at the top of the screen called Recommended Shortcuts for Earphones. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't see why a web browser, my text messages, or the BBC News application would be of any relevance when I have headphones plugged in. The dock seems to simply display popular applications that you use, and unfortunately, there's no way to edit the dock. You can, however, turn this dock off, but it does require a bit of digging around in the settings. So go to your settings, and then in the top right-hand corner, press on the More tab. On this screen, there is an option called Application Manager. Press on that. Once you're on the application manager page, swipe to the right twice to display all the applications on your device. Now on this list, you'll have to scroll a very long way down until you reach an option called Page Buddy Noti SVC. If you press on that, you will go into the application settings page and you need to disable the application. Now, this is a built-in system application and it will affect other areas of your phone and I'll show you which ones in just a second. Once you disable the application, if you scroll down from the top of the screen with headphones plugged in, you can now see that there is no earphone dock. To get the dock to appear again, you would have to re-enable the application and then restart the phone. Now for a slightly advanced tip, if you have Nova Launcher, you can control this option a little more accurately. So long press on the home screen and then create a shortcut. You want to create an activities shortcut, which is the first option. 
Now again, this is going to be a huge list of applications. So you want to scroll all the way down the list to settings, which will create another long list. And then you want to scroll all the way down this list until you find an option called Page Buddy. Once you've found it, press it and this will create a shortcut on your home screen called Page Buddy Settings. Now if you press on this option, this is where you can control not only the earphone dock, but also some other settings which are to do with the Page Buddy. Read the Page Buddy help for more information. So in this example, if I untick the earphones page, now if I look at the notification dock, it's disappeared. If I quickly check it again, we can see that when I swipe down from the top of the screen, the earphones dock has reappeared. If you do use this option, you don't have to restart the phone either. You will soon find that your home screen fills up with applications as you download them from the Google Play App Store. Thankfully, you can sort these into folders so you can better manage them. And here's how to do it with the Samsung default software. If you long press on one of the applications, you can pick it up and move it about the screen. If you drag it over another application, it will simply push it to the side. So at the moment, these are all individual icons. If you long press on an empty part of the screen, you will get a few options, and one of these is to create a folder. So if you press on that and then name the folder, you will create a blank folder with no applications in it, like this. So now I have a folder in the top left-hand corner of the home screen called Social. And all I need to do to put applications into that folder is long press on an application icon to pick it up, drag it into that folder, and then drop it on top. In this example, I have dragged two of my Facebook applications and a Twitter application into the social folder. Another way to start creating a folder is to long press on an application and drag it up to the top left hand corner of a home screen where there will be a create folder option. So now I have created an email folder. And just like applications, you can long press on the folder to move it around the screen. You can access the folder by simply tapping on it, and then if you want to remove applications, again, long press on the icon you want to pick up, and then drag it outside of a folder. So now I have removed the Twitter application from the folder. I will continue to remove applications, which will leave me with a blank social folder once again. So that's how to create and manage folders using the default Samsung software. But many of you will download at different launches. And the more common way to create folders is to simply long press on an application and drop it on top of another application which will automatically create a folder, like this demonstration in the Nova launcher. When I dropped one application on top of another, I automatically created a folder. Then if I pick up the application and drag it outside of a folder, it automatically disbands as demonstrated. And finally, if you try and drag a folder on top of another folder, you'll simply move them out of the way. Beyond the touchscreen, the Galaxy S4 has a physical home button and two touch buttons that illuminate when the device is being used. On the left is the context menu button and on the right is the back button. You can change the settings so they stay illuminated for longer or shorter periods and here's how to do it. First of all, go to the settings screen. Then choose the My Device tab at the top of the screen and next select Display. In this screen you will have to scroll down to the bottom where you will find a More Settings area and the option you want is Touch Key Light Duration. There are four options to choose from, so for example if I choose one and a half seconds the buttons will disappear very quickly, like that. The three alternative options are six seconds light duration Always off, which means that the buttons are never illuminated, or always on, which means that the buttons are always illuminated when the touch screen is on. So in this example, I've now chosen six seconds, which is my preferred choice. But you can choose whatever option you like to accommodate your preferences. I'll apologise in advance for the next two minutes of double entendres. Vibrating phones have been around for decades, but now you can configure and customise those vibrations to suit your needs. Go to the settings screen and choose the My Device tab and then select the sound option. The first thing you can do once you're on this screen is to adjust the vibration intensity for incoming calls, notifications and haptic feedback when you tap on the screen. Here's a quick demonstration of the most intense vibrations that the Samsung Galaxy S4 can do. Notifications are two sharp beats of vibration. And haptic feedback are short single stabs of vibration when you do things like typing on the keyboard and pressing the back button. You can, however, select a custom vibration style for incoming calls. 
Now, if none of them take your fancy, you can even create your own vibration style by selecting the create button and then tapping and pressing the screen like this. Once you've finished vibrating, so to speak, press the save button, name your vibration and then select it to test it. If you want to remove a vibration you have created, you will need to select a different vibration, back out of the screen and then return to the screen, long press on the vibration you created and then delete it. And if you've managed to keep a straight face throughout this video, thumbs up. Developer Options is a hidden screen that opens up some funky options to play with, at your own risk, I might add. Here's how to access it. Go to the Settings page and then choose the More tab in the top right hand corner of the screen. On this page you want to select the option at the bottom labelled About Device. At the bottom of the list is the build number of your device. Tap here several times and you will start to see a message that says you are X steps away from being a developer. Continue to tap here and the following message appears. Developer mode is enabled. When you back out of the screen you will now see a new option has appeared above about device which is the developer mode. There are lots of things you can do on a developer screen such as turning on visual feedback on touches, changing the transition speeds, displaying CPU data on screen and much more. But just to warn you again, playing about with developer options has its risks and can adversely affect the performance of your phone. So do some more research if you don't know what these options can do.